G'day and welcome, my name is Matthew. In this video, we're gonna have a look at Lightburn and the print and cut feature, and specifically use it for double-sided engraving. I use uh, plyboard and I uh, used to try to get everything lined up and uh, do the engraving one side, flip it, do the engraving on the other side, and then do our final cut. And sometimes it just was misaligned and ruined the workpiece. Uh, I also use uh, Trotex Trolays, which is a three-ply um, acrylic which has got a black surface both sides and a white core. So when we engrave it, it's um, white engraving. So what I'm doing is um, using the print and cut marks to line up my second side to do the cutting. So first of all, let's have a look at a small project that I've drawn up onto some plyboard, just of a moon, an unusual shape, so that we can show you how the print and cut aligns perfectly on uh, the second side cutting. So I've got this design that I want to cut out double sided and I want to do the blue engraving and then I want to cut out the uh, brown lines here. So if we have a look at our cut layers, I have the blue set to fill and I will adjust these settings in a moment. But uh, what we're going to look at first is how to set up the um, print and cut targets. So just uh, first create a circle and what we're going to do is we're going to make that circle black and turn it off so it doesn't cut that. Okay, so I'm going to draw some lines here. I'm going to draw those in green. And we're going to just put some uh, target lines in here. And then we're going to group these two target lines together. And we're going to cut those. But we'll cut them at the same power and speed that we would cut um, the material we're working with. So that's our first target set. So what we need to do is position um, these two crosshairs and we're going to position them somewhere on the workpiece. So right here uh, looks like a good enough spot. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you place them so long as when you do your copy and paste we're going to um, have them in exactly the same spot. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to paste it somewhere in here We'll go there and we'll make it on the same plane or the same level as the first one. So we've got these two targets in there. Now what we're going to do to get this so that it engraves on the back is we're going to um, copy this. We're going to paste it over here. So this will be side one and this second one is side two. And what we'll do is we will flip that and then I rotated this one, so we flip that and rotate it to the position that we want it in. And then this one here I also flipped over and just moved it a little bit back into position so that it's not going to get cut out. There's a little star there that's still going to be engraved and the other stars will be cut out. So that's how I got to the second stage, so I'm just going to get rid of this one here. So this side is our first side, and this one is our second side. So what I'm going to do first of all is save my project. Save as. And we'll just call it uh, moon and back. Okay. Now first of all, what we're going to do is um, remove this, first, this uh, second one that we've got here. We'll delete that. And we're going to just check our settings. First of all, we're going to do the fill, but we're not going to cut. But we are going to do the two lines. So I'm going to move those lines up the top. So that's the two target points. And they need to be set at the setting that you would normally cut through this plyboard so that you see those two cross marks on the reverse side when you turn it over. So all we're going to do for this first uh, setting is the line and then the engraving. So what we're going to do is send that to our controller. We have the design there with just the cross marks and the text that we're going to engrave. So this is uh, currently set with the origin as uh, the keying origin. So I'll have a look and I'll show you that. So if we go into menu and then go down to common parameters. And this is only applicable for the Trosend controller. We go into work mode and then we change it to here we've got the key origin. When we do our next step 
we need to change this to soft origin but for now we'll leave it on key origin and press enter now we can escape back out and we can um, set the origin so we've got our workpiece in there and we'll do a box to see if it fits so if you're using a Rawita controller you do the same process and send it to the controller like you see here we have the blue engraving and the green crosses and then you can position your laser head where you need to start and frame that and now we'll press start so with the engraving finished we can take the workpiece out and if we look at the back side we'll see the two hairline crosshairs that we made for our first and second print and cut positioning for light burn place the workpiece back into the laser and then we'll continue so now that we've turned our board over we can see that we can line the first one up with the red dot and uh, it doesn't matter if the board goes in crooked, that's the benefit of this print and cut. It will do the double siding no matter how it's positioned in the uh, laser bed. First of all, what we need to do is go back to Lightburn and we will set the first cutting position. We're back in Lightburn and I've got the file open again. So we've just finished this side over here and uh, we can see that this cross here now would represent this cross uh, on our flipped over workpiece. So what we'll do is we'll remove the side that we're not engraving and we're going to select the first cross mark. Now we go into tools, print and cut and we have our laser positioned right over the top of that cross so now we can set first target position. Now what we need to do is select the second target position and we're going to move the laser head to that position. So that was our first target position, so now we'll just move the laser over to our second target position until the red dot or your laser is positioned exactly in the centre of our cross. So once you have it positioned in the centre of the cross, you can then go back to light burn. In light burn we go to tools, print and cut and set the second target position. This pop-up will uh, pop up for the Trosend controllers telling us to set the origin mode to soft origin before continuing. So we say OK. Go to menu, go down to number 7, go to work mode and change the key, uh, the origin mode from key origin to soft origin and then press enter and now you can escape back to the main screen. And if you're using the Rawita controller, you don't need to change any origin settings. Just continue using the uh, print and cut features the same way as I described for the Trosend controller. After you've escaped back to the main screen, you can then go to Lightburn. Before we press send, what we'll do is we will uh, turn off this um, cut for the green because we're not going to cut the green out again. Uh, but we are going to do the engraving and then our outline cut and press send. It's um, rotated the image to fit our new cut positions. So now we press start. So now that it's finished its cut, let's see what uh, the result is. So we just pull this out and there we have it. We have the engraving front and back and it's all lined up. And once you've finished, you're going to turn the origin back to the uh, setting that you prefer. And in my case, I like keying origin. So I'm going to go back down to common parameter settings, press enter into work mode and change this back to key origin press enter and now it's back the way that I normally operate the machine. And now I'm just going to quickly show you how I do the double sided engraving on this bamboo so that we do one side with the engraving and then flip it over, do the engraving and then our final cut. And in Lightburn using the grid array tool I'm going to make 10 of these so that's just easy to do, one millimeter apart and we know that we need two of the target positions as we saw earlier. So I just create these two target positions and uh, I like to align them both so that they're at the top of the workpiece. Once we've got that, we can then send that to the laser to do the first side without the final cut. We're just cutting the two target positions. 
Now we go back into Lightburn and what we're going to do is flip the entire image but that makes our text mirrored. So what we'll do is for this case I can just select the 10 tags and mirror image those so that they're back the correct way. And now what we do is set those first and second target positions in Lightburn as we saw earlier and then send the second side to the laser machine. With this engraving, I've actually got the bottom text slightly darker than the, uh, the logo itself, and that's just the design. It just engraves a lot better on this bamboo in that way. And then once it's finally cut, we can see that we have the image both sides all nicely lined up and cut out. And you can see here that we also do the double and side engraving on the uh, Trolay's acrylic, and that's using exactly the same method. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully uh, it explained how to use the print and cut feature in Lightburn to do double-sided engraving and cutting. Uh, it's a great feature as uh, has been seen on the Lightburn channel for doing long pieces and this is just another use that you can use to do double-sided engraving using the same feature. If you like the video give it a thumbs up, if you haven't already subscribed hit the subscribe button, the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos in the future and until next time take care. Cheers.